Hey Pit Masters, what is up? Today we're going to make the perfect pulled chicken. We have a different setup than what you're used to, and there's a good reason for that. The company Petromax, which is very well known in Germany and the Netherlands, they are launching their product in America. They sent me some of their products and they asked me to make videos with it. So that's why we got this set up. We got a beautiful fire bowl from them and we're going to make a live fire and we're gonna be cooking on that. That's exciting, right? So when you're doing wood fire cooking, there are a lot of things you have to consider. And the first thing that you have to consider is the environment. Now, we have a drought here in the Netherlands at the moment. I originally planned to go out and have a live fire, a wood fire outside, but it's not safe at the moment. So safety goes first. Then you have to take a look at your wood because what you want to achieve is embers as quick as you can. We gotta start with the fire and we start with little thin pieces like this. They will burn up like paper and they will get the fire going. Then, We'll work with a little thicker cut like this that will catch fire, it will burn up quicker. But what we do not want to do is get a big log like this in because even though it will burn for a long time, it will also provide us with smoke. And we're cooking, we don't want smoke, we don't put in a log. If we want smoke, put in a bigger log. In this case, we're going to start it up and create embers as fast as we can. I like to start the base of my fire up with fire starters. If you don't have them handy, a bit of paper will do the trick, but these work fantastic. And if you just twist them and open them up like that, they'll create a bigger fire. Surrounding the fire starters, we're going to put these smaller cuts of wood and we're going to build up a small tower that will help to funnel the air up and create a quick fire. Now we have a Jenga tower and we'll put in these small chips that will help to burn and start up the fire quickly. This should be more than enough to get the fire started. So we'll light it up and go from there. With wood fire cooking, I like to use a local grown wood type. In this case, I'm using beech. I could have used oak. I need something that brings me good embers. And that's what I'm looking for. And in my case, this is absolutely perfect. We're building up that fire. We don't want a giant fire. We just want to keep it small and then keep on adding wood as we go along. I'm so happy with this fire. I was getting really cold. <laughs> we have got more than enough embers than we need for the cooking process that we're going to do. So it's time to start working on our ingredients. For our pulled chicken, we need a Dutch oven. And with Petromax, they come in a beautiful bag. Clean out of the box, and these are pre-seasoned, so you can use them straight away. First thing that we're going to do is put in a little bit of butter. Normally with pork, you don't need butter to grease it up, but with chicken, we need to be a little bit more careful. So, butter is a good idea. Now we'll let that soften up a little bit. Now with wood fire cooking, of course, you have to be extra careful not to burn your hands. So we'll take it off. We just want the butter to melt. On top of the butter, we're going to put bacon and lots of it. And the bacon just acts like a protection for the chicken because we're going to put direct heat on the bottom and direct heat on the top. We're going to knead it to make sure that the chicken doesn't dry out. This is about two and a half kilograms of chicken thighs. And of course, we're going to put, of course, we're going to add my favorite barbecue rub. Work it in with your hands. Now we'll put in a layer of chicken thighs right on that bacon. And on top of that, we're going to put some white onion rings. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this is pure fun. Building up a recipe, sitting around the fire. Does it get any better than this? Once we have a nice layer of onions in, we'll put in more chicken thighs and just keep repeating that process. We just put in the last layer of chicken thighs and look at the amount. It's perfect for this Dutch oven. To top that off, we're going to put in a cup of barbecue sauce. 
This is gonna be so amazing. The barbecue sauce is gonna add a lot of flavor to this dish. And finally, we're gonna put on more bacon. Our dish is ready to go on the wood fire and then put it on our fire plate. We're cooking over wood fire, so we gotta keep attending to that fire. We got a lot of heat at the moment from the bottom, but we also want heat at the top. So we're taking these embers with a big tong and just putting them on top of the lid. This way we are creating that typical Dutch oven. And at the same time, we wanna make sure we keep a little fire going. So we'll take one spot, build up a fire. Now you wanna keep listening to the sound that you hear in the Dutch oven. That's gonna tell you a lot about what's going on. I can hear a clear sizzle in there. Now I know my fire is hot just by listening to that sizzle. So what I'm looking for is to slow it down, keep the temperature low and just slowly let it simmer. So I'm not adding any more firewood, but I'm just keep listening to that sizzle. And if it dies down a little bit, then we're on the right track. As you can see on the side of my ember fire, it's much hotter in the pan than on the other side. So the rotating is very important, but at the same time, this is turning out perfect. We want to keep that fire going, so we still need to produce these small blocks of wood. I've been nurturing my fire for three hours. I've been watching this pan. I've been checking the content and now it's done. So let's take the pan off the grill and take a look inside. Wow, look at that. Perfect, the bacon didn't burn. It just crispened up here. Look at that. And it's been covering and protecting the chicken from drying out, from burning on the outside. But now we gotta put in a fork and see if we can shred the chicken. It just pulls apart. This chicken is ready. Of course, I gotta do the taste test. <laughs> this is my favorite part. I just can't wait, but I know it's really hot. So I gotta blow it first. There we go. Oh. Normally when you overcook chicken, it turns out dry, but this way, it stays juicy. Well, look at the amount of juice that we got in this pan. Let's set it aside, let it cool down a little bit so we can actually handle it, and then we'll start shredding it. I quickly toast my bread over the leftover fire. Just enough to crispen it up so we can make a pulled chicken sandwich. We got our toasted bread ready. And look at this pulled chicken. It looks absolutely insane, so juicy. And if you could only smell this. Wow. So we'll get a decent amount, let it drip out a little bit, and put it on our bread. Close it up, there we go. Let's bite into it. Mm. Mm. And this is some really good stuff. This stuff is absolutely insane. It's juicy, the bacon is mixed in there, the flavor of the onion is in there. This stuff is really, really good. And I bet you can store this real easy. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe video. And if you did, leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. And as always, I wanna say a big thank you to everyone that has a membership here on YouTube or is a Patreon to my channel. If you're not a Patreon, but you want to become one, go down to the link or hit that membership button here on YouTube. Thank you guys. Until the next time, keep on grilling and it's my